Good morning to all. Welcome to the second day of orientation. I take immense pleasure in inviting all the first year students to one of the very great opportunities that you have in your next two years, three years, or four years, depending on whether you are masters or you are a three year program or a four or five year engineering program at Shastra. This phase of what you're going to spend in your next two, three, four, or five years is going to define by large means what you aspire for your life, what you are going to learn, what you are going to carry forward to the society at large. I am PR Narin from the School of Chemical and Biotechnology. And this orientation is on online classes. I think by now, uh, the online classes is no longer uh, a new word to any of you. Most of you must have gone through this in your school during 11th and 12th. But we will see now how this online education or online class is going to happen in the university's system. I request all the students to see through the presentation. Now, this presentation is going to be more interactive. You don't need to put your questions in the orientation chat space. We will have an, another mechanism by which I would take in your questions. So please stick on to this presentation. And let's begin. Now, what I have planned for today is shown in the slide. I'll touch upon the university education, which was uh, in detail described probably in the school presentation that you had just before this presentation. And also yesterday by the vice chancellor and also by uh, Dean Dr. Pugarendi. Then we will see about some perspectives of online education. I'll recapitulate on your academic curriculum. And then the last three points that I have listed here, which is on readiness, leveraging, and then on a demonstration of a Google Classroom. So this is a plan for what you're going to have for about next uh, one and a half hours. In this Venn diagram, what I have captured is the larger essence of institutionalized education. A university education is an institutionalized education. So you have a space called university where we collectively come, rather we consciously come and we committedly come to earn a degree program. A degree program could be at undergraduate or a postgraduate graduate level. Now this degree program revolves around four important pillars which are captured here. One is the knowledge pillar, then the skills, the purpose of why we are uh, learning this, and of course, the value attributes. Now, if you recollect the presentation of the first day by Dr. Pugarendi and Dr. Badri, they captured, in essence, all these in one or the other words. Knowledge is all about the factual information of of that degree program. Like suppose if you are a BTEC computer science fellow, what are the subject knowledge regarding to computer science that you are going to gain? What programming tools are you going to learn? Those are all the factual knowledge. Now this applies to any program. Skills. You must now recollect what Dr. Badri told that in this age, the defining parameter is whether can you continuously upskill yourself. The skills can be of soft skills. The skill can be in terms of computational skills, problem solving skills, inquiry skills, team building, and so on and so forth. This is not the only four skills. I have just uh, reiterated some of the pointers so that you can connect with this slide. The value attributes is something that distinguishes Shastra from all the similar universities in this part of the India, or rather uh, in India at large. We don't only uh, produce graduates. If you recapitulate what Dr. Pugarendi said as the mission and vision of Shastra, it's not about just producing graduates. It's about 
having uh, the best human for the society at large. We want to ensure that we are all socially responsible and we have a social consciousness in the graduate. And that is something unique to Shastra. It is one of our distinctive feature. And the purpose of learning could be what is the goal that we have in our life. Each of us will have different aspirations and these aspirations can in turn change over a period of time. It can be elevation of self or it is for needs of the society. So any activity, any program, any concept that we devise in an institutionalized education like in university will serve these four pillars. It should be connected with the purpose, having a value, should need to upskill and should also provide the knowledge. Now, education is not about like just giving the book information. It is about a learning experience. It is something that changes you, that changes from you, that changes within you. And because of this change, you have a positive impact on the society, on the human system, or rather on the life at large on earth and all around, I would say. And that is captured on these four E's that I have put here. I'll just give maybe a five second. You just think of what these four E's could be. These four E's should be with respect to these four pillars. That's a clue. The four E's that I have put in the next slide should be connected to these four pillars of education, skills, purpose, and value attributes. Can you get what are those? Maybe you can think. And those fours are like something like this. Enrich, you need to get yourself in expertise. You need to evolve and you need to explore. Now, what you will enrich in this youthful years that you are going to spend in university with faculty and with your peers, you will enrich your knowledge of that particular domain. And this enrichment of the knowledge in that domain has to be adequately, appropriately supported by making yourself expertise in the skills. And this expertise in skills and enrichment of knowledge should come out of the value system that you will evolve for yourself. It evolves from the synergy with the society that you are in and it evolves from what you understand also of yourself. And once you have enriched, you got expertised and you evolved as a value system, then you explore the greater purpose of the education at large. And that's why I have a title here as education is about a learning experience and it is the journey of oneself. Now, I don't want to make this as just a PowerPoint presentation. So I have some activity. I am going to go to another app, which is called menti.com. I would request all of you to note down this number, 8004792 or you can note down what is uh, the URL here. The URL may be slightly tough because you have to note down so many characters. It is very easy if you note down this number, 8004792.1. And then if you are on a laptop, just open the next browser and go to menti.com and then enter this number. If you are watching on mobile, you can just switch the app. Again, go to menti.com. On your browser, put menti.com and put this code. The code is 8004792.1. So let me just share that and go to that screen. So I'll just stop presenting here. And I will go to the screen where I'm going to have this menti. Right. Can you see in your screen? 
that you are on the first page of online education and there should be a thumbs up icon there. You need to just click at the thumbs up icon. And when you click at the thumbs up icon, and if you come back to the Google Meet, you can actually see how many people have clicked. So I again repeat, go to menti.com. So it is there on your Google Meet screen now, menti.com. Use the code of 8004792. There is a thumbs up icon. You need to just click at this icon so that it takes a counter. It acts as a counter. So I will know how many people are there. So you are now smart kids of this generation. I am very sure that you know how to switch between two apps or two tabs. If you are having access to a laptop or a system, you can easily switch back. Or if you are on mobile, I'm sure that you can switch back the app and then do. I'll just wait for about a minute so that people will join. The code is now visible. You can see this code and the screen in the Google uh, live stream. So in the live stream, you are seeing the score, this first slide. The same you will also see when you log into menti.com and use the code 8004792. So I could see here the numbers are rising here. So there are 800. It's going to touch about 900, so on. So that's nice. So let's let us wait for us to cross. Uh, so let me check how many people are there in the live stream. So we have about 1,800 people on live stream now. So let us expect that at least uh, somewhere about 1,400 would be able to join. Oh, good. So the numbers are rising like probably the Sensex. So this is going to be a, a kind of fun activity and interaction rather than one way uh, hearing uh, to the orientation. I'll go to the next slide uh, once about like 1,400 uh, students join. So we'll just give a small threshold. So you have to open menti.com and use the code that you now see on the live stream screen. The code is 8004792. We are going to reach the mark of 1400 about now. Okay, I think uh, eight, eight uh, people have joined. So let me go to the next slide now. I hope you will see a question there, right? The question would be, what is one new thing that you learned? Okay, or that you did? What do you mean by when I say did this, something that you must have learned or you did, which otherwise you would have not done in your pandemic. Right? If not for this pandemic, if not for this online education for about now uh, one and a half years, right? It started somewhere around uh, March 2020 and we are already around in October. So what is one thing that you learned? You will have a text box where you can enter right you can enter that a word and in the live stream if you come back let us wait for the results i have hidden the results now so you can't see the results now you can't see the results now 
because I have hidden the results in the live stream link. But in your screen, when you go to this menti.com and use this 8004792, you will be able to enter that something that you did or one thing that you will say as you have learned in pandemic or due to this pandemic, if not for pandemic, you might have not learned this. You might have not done this. What is that? So I think about 500 people have already responded. So for people who are still finding out how to respond, I repeat the instruction, go to menti.com. I mean, in your browser, go to menti.com. If you are on a access having to laptop or uh, system, just open in another tab, go to menti.com, use the code 8004792. There's a question that would be displayed. You have to enter a word which will describe what you learned or what you did during this pandemic. And then if not for pandemic, you might have not learned that. You might have not done that. Right? So we have got about 800 results now. Let me just show the results. If you come back uh, to the live stream, now can you see a clouds of uh, uh, terms? You can come back to the live stream and you can see a cloud of terms. And very prominently, you can see that there's one word that's uh, appearing, which is cooking, right? Cooking is in the center, right? Why it is there in the center? Very simple. Most of you used the same word. Most of you have done the same word, learn cooking. So you might have entered cooking and that's where it is there. There are also other similar words going around, uh, like reading books, online classes. Uh, there is also somebody has put nothing. So I think many people have also put nothing, self-care, workout, adjustment, time management and everything. Now, it's not about what you have done is correct or not. I just want to connect this later on when I go back to the slide uh, with the words that you have put. I could also see somebody has put typewriting, somebody has put Python. See, the question was very clear. Something that you did, if not for pandemic, you should have not done. Now, somebody has even put sleeping. So I was wondering how you learned uh, to sleep. Probably, I think I would take it as you learn to sleep now properly in a good time interval uh, because you are now at home. So uh, the parents or the elders at home are watching you. So that's nice. Thanks for your uh, uh, texting. And I hope you like this interaction. I go to the next uh, question. Now, the question is very simple. You have a choose. You have to tell me which platform was used for online education that you have used. So when I say you have used, it could be typically in your school because all of you are freshers. Uh, so typically in your 11th and 12th, what did you use? Right. What is the platform that you have used? Again, you can enter the choice. I think it's a choose. And you come back to the live stream and wait because I have not uh, uh, put the results on the live stream. It's it's still hidden. So let's just see. Let's gather at least about a thousand uh, responses and then let's see. Let's see the kind of tool that or the platform that you are well versed with. So let me show the results now. You can see the results in the live stream window. Right. It is about 42 percent uh, is in uh, just a minute. Yeah. Uh, about 42 percent is in Zoom. Right. 36 in Google Meet. Uh, 12 in Teams. Uh, non-news Skype and 10 percent in other platforms. So I'm very sure 
that if you put together this, then that means majority of you are either in Zoom or, or in uh, uh, Google Meet. So you are very well accustomed as such to the process of attending the classes or participating in classes. Thanks. That's a, it's a nice, good statistics. Uh, Teams is a very fractional amount, but majoritively it is Zoom and Google Meet. Thank you. Uh, the next one is, now you will have a question where you have to text, right? Probably I think two words or something. You have to text, what is the benefit of online education? Right, what is the benefit of online education? What do you see as a benefit of online education? Now, this time I did not hide the results. You can simultaneously see uh, uh, the words populating around. Oh, there are people who say there is no benefit. Oh, that's surprising. Right? Comfortable is coming, time saving, flexibility, travel benefits. You can see travel is around the center. Right? Many people have put travel, student friendly. But still, nothing is at the center so that means still there are large number of people who say that they are not seeing the benefits of online education right i'm very happy that i could capture this response because this is very important because at least as of now we are in the online mode we certainly wish that all of you will come to campus because you coming to campus as young students will energize the campus itself with a very youthful energy. But that is subjected to the norms of the government. But till that time, we are very safe. We will not be able to have you in the campus, right? So we need to travel this learning journey only online. And when then online, you are saying that nothing. So when about of the sample of 1,200, if nothing is still at the center, so that means it's a very good means by which we have captured this response and we need to streamline this and discuss this further. So it's a very good input that I have got from this. And there are other words also like time flexibility, convenient time uh, uh, is also written. So thanks a lot again for this uh, response. Let me go to the next question. The next question is, what do you think is an issue in online education? Right? Now, so many people have said there is no benefit. So now you should know what is the issue. So you have to say, uh, S is not an issue. I'm asking what is the issue in the online education? Network problem distraction. Now you can see the results. Procrastination, network, again, understanding is an issue. Tension is an issue. Stress, boring, right? For many of you, it is a network. So network, interaction, eye strain, eye strain, Again, I could see a lot of eye strains, a lot of distractions, right? Somebody has written inequality. Somebody has written uh, no concentration. Right? So procrastination again, eye problem, network, uh, tough to understand, practical experiences are missing. Okay, but majority of it, all these could be issues, but the major issue that you have is probably I can take it as uh, network distraction. Probably that is coming bold. You can now see. It. Please don't change your words or the issue based on what response you are seeing in the live stream. Right, let us see collectively where is the issue going on. The distraction is still at the center. So I understand that that's some major work. 
Now there are different spellings of distraction people have put, so it would have gone all through. Uh, there is about doubt clarification, somebody has put not understanding, understanding issue, all these things have, they have put. So let us take now, like for example, network problem, distraction, network problem, distraction, understanding. Understanding network problem still, okay. So let us fix that distraction is one major issue. Network is the next issue. And now subsequently you have understanding and all other stuffs also run coming in. Now the next slide. Now given that distraction is an issue, understanding is an issue, lack of doubt clarification is an issue in online. How will you mitigate it? When I say how we can, so I think power has gone. So I'll just uh, put my camera off. Uh, okay. Uh, understanding, uh, when you say understanding is an issue, when you say distraction as an issue, what solution do you have? Right? We should also propose some solution, right? It may not solve, but at least we should have some idea of how are we going to solve this issue? Coming to an on-campus class isn't, uh, it's like a very ideal solution, right? If given a chance, everybody, we would like to have you in campus and there is no denial of that, right? But set aside that solution, right? Having face-to-face -face classes is always a solution or rather that is a trivial solution, right? That is a well-known solution. I'm not talking about a well-known solution or a trivial solution. All I'm asking you is, Given that you have to have only online class and in the online class, distraction is an issue, understanding is an issue, doubt clarification is an issue. How will you mitigate it, right? What solution, what ideas do you have, right? Because that is also important, right? Because as, an, uh, as you are in the process of learning, you need to also propose some solutions so that those solutions you should work it out and probably the solutions that you tell tomorrow itself will be the solution that everybody else is looking for and it will solve the issues itself. Right. So what solutions are you talking? Let us see the results. Right. So few students per teacher. OK. Offline education, as I said, this could not be a solution because that's nothing solution within this online class. I am asking. Within the online class, what is the solution you're asking? Few students per teacher, that's very good proposition. Right, what is the solution? What does mitigate means? How will you resolve this issue? Somebody asked, what do you mean by mitigation? Mitigation means how will you lessen this issue? How will you resolve this issue? Or what can you do so that this issue is not affecting your learning? That is what is mean by mitigation. Time management. Brief break between classes. That's a very nice thing. Brief break between classes. So I will actually certainly note it down. Some of the very interesting uh, things that you have done. So brief breakup. Uh, few students per teacher. That's a very nice thing not coming to class not attending class that's not a solution right like you are keeping yourself away from educating yourself so that's not offline class as i said cannot be a solution because that is always is a permanent solution interaction with students right interaction with students that's very nice thing that somebody has said right uh, Creating online poll, creating online poll after every 20 minutes to make class interesting. Very good. Okay, having a separate devices for online class, separate device for online class, separate room. Okay, separate device and the self control. So that's a very nice thing. Stable network. Yeah. 
but I think we may not have much say on that stable network part. All this offline class, they are the best solution. So that is nothing to do with the online interaction between teachers, improving the interaction between teachers, rather I would write it as uh, between students and teachers, between students and teachers. Uh, give fast internet to students and I think uh, the university, no university has control on the internet. Class filled with more fun. Group study with fellow students. Group study with fellow students. So that's a very nice thing. Lack of doubt clarification is an issue. I want, how will you resolve it? How will you resolve it? Discipline yourself, self-control, engagement. So that's nice thing. Engagement that somebody has put. Uh, I'm just going through. Content, good content creation. Good content creation in online class. That's a very nice thing. Separate sessions for each student for clarifying doubt. Separate session for each student. So you want uh, individual attention also to be put in as part of the online class. That's very nice. A fun quiz or interaction between classes that somebody has said, good hybrid classes so that's nice of somebody to write this word hybrid classes okay give individual time to each student to clear a doubt so that is a separation separate student hours so that's that's very nice thing i appreciate the student whoever has given this solution there's an individual student Time. So that's nice. By staying alone in calm, pace, relaxed. Yeah, distraction is an issue. The question is, how will you resolve this issue? Quizzes, interaction. Okay, so I think uh, attractive slides. So somebody wants very attractive slides to retain attention. So that is nice. Just putting rules for ourselves, guiding members in offline classes. Very good. Both uh, online as well as online by separating the class into smaller and manageable batches. Nice. Screen recorder and replaying it two, three times. Very good. So this is for re-emphasis of the concepts. Teacher-student interaction should be encouraged, should be strengthened. Nice. Lot of things. Very nice. And some of these are really good. Now, all these that you want, like in terms of interaction, in terms of separate hours for student, creating good content, uh, uh, a few students per students and everything. These are actually aspects of online education. Now I will go back to my slide and I will continue from there. You don't need to close this mentee. You can come back to your live stream now. You can come back to your live stream now. We will pause this mentee action. That was just to break the monotony I have uh, put there. Uh, I can put on the camera now. Uh, yeah. So I'll come back uh, to the slides. You can come back to the live stream. So get back to the live stream. Now this is all is what I thought in one or the other way you will also capture. And I think you have captured all these things either as strength or issues. Now did you notice one thing? You said there was nothing benefit of online class. 
but when you are talking about issues and then telling about how to mitigate it you are talking about good content now this good content when you have convenience to learn at any point reflect all this can happen only in online education when you are attending the physical class when you are outside the class it's that's all if you did not take the notes if you want to go back to the uh, to that particular class and see what happened in the 20th minute you won't be able to do this but now do you see you have recording of the class so it is more of an in person teaching any time you can go back to that recorded content to that particular minute or time and then you will be able to churn what you have listened your understanding can improve so the medium of delivery which was only predominantly chalk and talk and you have to make notes in the class has been transformed i agree interaction of peer physical is missing but then it is up to us when i say up to us it is also up to the faculty and it is also up to the student to interact to interact responsibly to interact with a commitment to learning and with an interact with purpose so we also need to take initiative when i say we every faculty will take initiative and every student will also take initiative and this is what i will capture by these two words sorry which i have written here as freedom and mindset to learning if you remember this was the first word dr pokarendi yesterday captured there the online education not just the online education the university education as such gives larger freedom when compared to the school education a school education is more structured in a fortified wall university education is also structured but it has an inbuilt freedom it is up to you it is up to the each person who is a part of this education system to leverage this freedom right and in one of the uh, uh, recommendations or the solution is about the learning space somebody has said that uh, it is better to have a separate room or a study hall or something i agree if we have that that's nice but understand this learning space from very different perspective earlier all people used to come to one geographically located place now no longer that's needed the learning boundary there is no a physical or a geographical boundary for a university no matter where are you you might be now in different parts of india maybe some of you are even abroad but still you are part of shastra today right so the learning boundaries the physical boundaries no longer matter all it matters is how are you going to tune your mindset to learn definitely i agree distraction is there distraction is an issue but we cannot keep cribbling on the issue we need to evolve how to address the issue right and what you might miss is something which is the campus fun right but we very well hope that soon you will come back and have this campus fun in campus at chastra be at tanjore or at kumbakonam now this slide i'm not going to spend much detail uh this is all about uh, uh, the semester you have heard lot of these now you have a two semester pattern the subjects are called courses you have a course code and a name and you have a credit structure syllabus and a well defined learning outcome we will see in great details of this on october 12th when i will again come and i'll talk about your student web interface and a parent web interface so i have just put this on the slide but i will talk more on the student web interface and the parent web interface where you can see the timetable the syllabus and everything all these questions will be taken up on 12 october in the online class how are you going to engage you will predominantly engage first with the live class and that's where this attendance point comes again i would like to revisit the term attendance 
that was connotated by Dr. Pugarendi, it is not about your physical attendance of you being in the meet. It is of your attendance of learning, right? It is very easy for one to say that I will watch the recorded class. But many a times we procrastinate and we don't end up watching till a time comes when it is very tough to watch. You should not do that, right? That's one bad practice. That's one bad practice you should not develop. Have a dedicated fixed mindset that you will attend as far as possible all online class. We will then have a Google Classroom. We are going to use Google Classroom as our online learning management system at Shastra. So it is not Zoom. It's not Microsoft Teams or Skype or any other. We will use the Google. In fact, that's why your register number at shastra.ac.in is a Google linked email ID. And we will also engage through Google chat. You have been engaging in the Google chat during the orientation. So you have an experience of what is that. And when you join in the class, you will also have WhatsApp group. So a platform is there for you to exchange your queries, thoughts, conversations with the teacher. Now it is up to you that you have to send your message so that the faculty at the other end can also respond, right? This Google Classroom will serve as a repository of learning and it will also have all recorded videos. How you should prepare yourself for this online semester is what captured here. This is something by default is now available to you by virtue of your Shastra email ID, which is your register number at shastra.ac.in. To a good extent, try to have one of these. I understand in some cases, you may not be able to have a personal tab or a personal mobile, but it could be shared with members of the family, with the siblings, right? That apart, Wherever possible, I presume that you have an access or a shared access to a laptop or a tab or a mobile. A 2 GB per day would be a, a, a good recommendation for an internet plan. The learning plays an ambience. I would like to borrow from one of the solutions propo uh, proposed by a student as a separate room. If possible, it's very nice. Try to sit in a place which will not distract you first if possible and have a very good mindset to learn so when you are coming to a google classroom google meet make sure that you want to learn something on that day from that course right no matter what are all the hardships no matter what are all the difficulties the willingness to learn a cherishment of learning a commitment of learning is always required and that will help you to surpass all the other hardships that you will face because of pandemic you are not it's not like by action we have this it's not by any orchestration we, all of us are rather i would say victims of the pandemic era but this pandemic era has made us lot of tech saviness we are able to learn from our own learning place. So there are also a positive way of looking at things. And to leverage better the online semester, I would advise try to have a very good physical health. Now, because you are going to use mobile phones or laptops for little long academic hours, I would straight away advice please keep away yourself from all gaming and other stuff on mobile or on laptop go to a place and then now i think sports are permitted you don't need to go to a ground at least you can do skipping in your own home you can do jogging you can just climb stairs up and down probably 10 minutes a day have a physical exercise that can move your muscle, that can make you prepared, that can make you sweat, so that your health is first well. A good health is required so that you can have a better learning. 
and have an optimal resources that I showed in the previous slide. Come to a live class. Please don't postpone everything for a recorded class. Come to a live class for an online learning and an engagement. Try to make notes or rather the notes might be also provided. But what is much more important, the other part is you need to now rather than make your own notes. It's not about taking those notes. It's about making your own notes. How will you make your notes? You can revisit the recorded lecture. Probably you will revisit in a very fast forward fashion. You will just go back and see the 10 minutes and write down your notes. It is always good that if you write in your own handwriting after listening to the class or after listening to the recorded lectures, you will have a better learning. You will have a better reflection. You will have a better cherishment of learning. And never hesitate to reach for help. You can reach to the respective deans and associate deans of the schools that you are. If you go to the Shastra website, under academics menu, you will find schools, you will find the list of all faculties and the dean. So you can very well email them and they will do respond within a reasonable time. So with this, I'm going to the next part of my presentation where I'm just going to showcase on how to join a Google Classroom. This is only a demonstration, the part one of the demonstration. The part two of the demonstration, I will take it on 12th. Today, you don't need to join any Google Classroom. I only want you to note down, right? You have to make your own notes, pointers for joining the Google Classroom. I understand 36% of the people have already used Google Meet. So you very well know what is Google Classroom, but we should appreciate, we should acknowledge that we also have at least another 50% of the people who have not used Google Classroom. So we need to be consciously aware of our peers who are learning with us and we need to enable them also. If they also travel with us, and that's the larger growth at large. So let me just go to the demonstration. For the demonstration purpose, I have logged in into a student email ID. So you can see here, it uh, student2 at shastra.ac.in. You can just watch this demonstration. There is no need for you to do anything now. You don't need to join any class uh, at this juncture. So I have logged in into a, a student email ID, uh, a demo student email ID or a dummy ID. You might have logged in to your register number at shastra.in. The first thing that you need to do is to set a recovery email and a password. Because this will help you to recover a password if you have forgotten it. So I will show you how to do it. Those of you who already know it, ensure that you do it. If you do not know, please watch this demo and then do it. So you have to log in into your email and then click at the settings. So click at this manage your Google account rather. Sorry. So log in with your register number at shastra.ac.in. Click on this manage your Google account. It will open a tab like this. It will open a tab like this. Go to security. Go to the security tab. There is something called recovery phone and recovery email. Add your mobile number that you are going to use in at least for a little larger permanent period of you being at Shastra. Right. And add a recovery email. Right. So you can add a mobile number. You can add uh, your email and OTP will come or a uh, uh, a key will come to that email and to that uh, mobile number so that you can uh, use that to recover later on if you have not done that. So let's say for example, if you click this, it will ask you to add an email. So you have to again log in. So let's say I've logged in. Uh, maybe yes, I'll just put the password. Okay. 
here. So let me put the password. It will ask you for an email which you have to give. It, this should be your personal Gmail that you will use it for recovery. This is something like that. Whatever this could be at yahoo.com or I would prefer this to be rather gmail.com. Whatever is your personal Gmail or a Yahoo or whatever you use, put that and verify it. And key will come to that particular email. You have to enter that key over here. I hope this you can do it. There should not be any difficulty here. Once you have done, once you have verified, you go back again to the same screen. You should be able to see that email ID here. And you can change that also at any time. If at all, if you are using, going to use on some other email ID. Similarly with the mobile number, right? Okay, let me put password. Similarly with the mobile number, you have to add a recovery phone. So you need to add a phone number wherein you can receive this OTP or a key and then you enter it there then it gets added. So I would advise all people to first add a mobile number and an email ID as a recovery phone number and a recovery email which is must for you to recover the password in case if you miss it for your Shastra email account. So how to go to the screen? Very simple. When you open your email, click this account and say manage your Google account. When you go to myaccount.google.com. So when you go to myaccount.google.com or manage your Google account, in the security tab, under recovery email and phone, please put a mobile number and phone and then do it. So this is the first thing. The next about joining Google Classroom. To join the Google Classroom, uh, you are at, when the timetable is being put on the portal, we will put this over the end of orientation. When I say end of orientation, it is not the end of this session of orientation. When I'm saying it's towards 12, the timetable will be available in the Shastra website. The link will be given there. It will also be made available in your student web interface. And I reiterate of the student web interface, we will re revisit one more time on October 12th when I speak, I will talk about that. But along with the timetable, you will get a link or you will get a code which will enable you to join a Google Classroom. So let me just a demo code from one of my other classroom that I have created. So you may get a code like this. You don't need to note down this code. I'm just saying that you might get a code. For every course, there can be a code or there can be a, uh, just a minute, I'll, uh, yeah, I'll copy the invite link also. This will be something like this. Uh, let me just make it bold. Okay. So this is a class uh, code or we will call it in short as GCR code. And the same will be also a link. You can see this, this will be the same. These characters will be the same, right? All you have to do is take these characters, right? And then use it for joining the Google Classroom. If you are on mobile, you can directly click it and also join. So I would request that you install a Google the following apps. Also on your mobile, one is the Google Classroom app uh, at the Google Meet, which is now with, with respect to the Gmail. So you should have a Gmail app and also about uh, Google Docs and Google Drive. So please have these apps in your mobile. It will be very useful for your online class. So Google Classroom app, a Google Meet or a Gmail should be there. A Google Doc and a Google Drive. Let me just for demonstration copy this uh, class code. 
so this is the Google Apps. So you can click here and then go to Classroom or you can directly uh, type it as Google Classroom to get the URL. So you can see that this is classroom.google.com. So you can see that you can from your email page click on this Google Apps, the square dots that you see at the top. Click on that, just browse through. You will see here Google Classroom. If it is not coming, just click once more time and it will turn up usually. Or otherwise, you just search it out for Google Classroom and this is the URL. And go to this URL, click on this plus button, make sure your account is shastra.ac.in. Typically, when you open the browser, you will have your Gmail opening. And this is many times an issue. You might not notice that it is your ac.in. Be it in laptop or it on mobile, make sure your browser opens with ac.in. Because only with ac.in you can join. So open with your ac.in, paste that code, and then click on this join. Click on this join. And that's how you have joined the class. That's it. Right? It's very simple. I'll recapitulate again. On When you are logging on the email, click on this Google Classroom. Click on this classroom.google.com. Classroom.google.com. Click on this plus icon. And just paste this code and click join. And you will come to the home page of this class you will be able to see the photo of the uh, the faculty if they have put the photo or otherwise you will predominantly see only the name this is how you will have list of classes like for example if you see uh, on uh, my list of classes i will have like this there will be list of classes for each one of us depending on how many courses that we take so if you click this, this is your classroom. I will discuss more on this on 12th, but at least briefly let us touch about the tabs at least at this. On October 12th, I will revisit this classroom and I will talk about how to upload an assignment and everything, right? Uh, this is stream tab. This is the classwork tab and this is the people's tab. Oh, I could see that many people have joined this. Good. So this is only a demo course. And anyhow, after uh, the orientation session, I mean, at the end of orientation schedule, I will delete this class. But this is OK if you have joined. Nothing wrong, right? This is just for uh, a temporary demo purpose. You can see who has joined your class also from this. So you can see all your classmates. You can see teachers. And somebody suggested that we should have few students per teacher. So that means you are saying that you should have more teachers per Google Classroom. Yes, we have taken this very carefully at Shastra, not now. Ever since we went to online class, we have taken measures. In all possible classes, we have tried to ensure that we also have a co-teacher with us at, in the Google Classroom at times wherever possible it is in the Google Meet and certainly wherever possible in the tutorial hours so that there is a needful attention given to the students. So you can see all your teachers also as part of this classroom, right? So this is the basics of joining a Google Classroom. Now you are in your first semester. So when you click here in the classes, you can see all that is happening over here, right? All that's happening over here. All your classes will come here. When you move on to your second semester, when you move on to your second year, we will archive the class. What do you mean by we archive the class? I, as a faculty teaching that particular course, if I complete my first semester, I archive this class. Now, once I archive this class, you will not be able to see in this part. You will rather see it in the archived class. Now, I have already done that.
for an another student probably i'll just uh, show it up this is again an another uh, demo student login so when you click at this archived classes now you can see here this is a separate student account now this is student one and you can see that student one has this course archived so it is like this all your learning repositories will also be stored for subsequent referencing right so this is a great benefit of online class right so you say there is no benefit is this not a benefit this is not possible with so much ease in a face-to-face class but the online means of engagement has given this benefit of revisiting the contents at any point in time and relearning and unlearning which is the most essential skill we need to unlearn we need to relearn we need to learn it properly keep on improvising our learning so you will have classes and you will also have archived classes archived classes are typically at the end of the semester when you go to the next class now with this i will stop on the google classroom basics today and during the next session which i will take it on october 12th i'll talk about how to upload assignments and i'll also talk on how to join a google class from a calendar rather how to integrate that with a calendar towards the same maybe if you want to still join for a demo purpose i will still show this course code you can join but there is a limitation of joining not everybody will be able to join this demo course so don't worry about not joining this uh, demo course right so this demo course is this is what is the code i have used vxs nyht you don't need to worry that some of your friends have joined and you have not joined this is purely for demonstration purpose for me to show you how to join on on 12th i will talk about uploading assignments accessing contents and most important thing on the calendar in the google classroom how to join a google meet which is posted on a google calendar right so that is one important thing so make sure uh, by 12th i will also include this so make sure by 12th of october you have these apps also installed on your uh, mobile so that you can practice or during my session or little after the session so i want google classroom google meet and a gmail google docs google drive and a google calendar what i mean by google calendar is a google calendar as an app you need to install it on your mobile and sync it all this should be synced with your register number at shastra.ac.in and i reiterate every day at least once in the morning and once in the evening please check your email please check the shastra portal this should be one professional practice that you should start building from day one and your day one was yesterday you are already into the university you are part of shastra and your process of learning has already begun now let me go to the next the next is on the question answer session now the question answer session i'm going to take very interactively again on only uh, the mentimeter so now you can go to the mentimeter you will have a slide you will have a slide sorry uh, i think i came back so i will just uh, yeah you will have a slide where you have to ask questions correct you will have a slide where you can ask questions you go to menti.com put the code 8004792 there is an option for you to put your question and you can put your question and i can take it up here
go to menti.com put the code 800 yes the first question can the same code be used for every class in our course no every course will have a different uh, gcr code or a link and that will be as part of the timetable right it will be shown displayed with the timetable so when the timetable is put you will understand that when will our first ca exam will be held i'm very happy that someone is already planning for assessment uh, typically it takes around a month from the beginning of classes so we usually have internal assessment at a month's interval but wait for a formal announcement the regular classes are going to begin from vijay dasmi and from that we will schedule we will inform well in ahead but roughly going by the standards of normal uh, the routine it will be once after every month when will face to face class starts it's a good question we also want that to be uh, beginning up but uh, i i'm not sure uh, a critical date we can do it it is very uncertain at this stage uh, but keep watching the shastra portal as soon as possible we would like to have you here if you listen if you recapitulate what uh, the vice chancellor told yesterday we wish to have you probably after diwali but that's all depend on how system evolves is there uh, this is something uh, not pertaining to this session so i would uh, request not to post questions that is outside this orientation session this you have to take it directly to the office the schedule for online class so that means it is a timetable you will get your timetable in the website shastra website and also it will be in the student web interface uh probably by the end of orientation that means on october 12th you will get all this done so wait for that day and you attend the orientation session on that day happy world teachers day thanks thanks a lot oh it's a world teachers day today i did not know that so i'm very happy uh, to the student how to ask question in another orientation yeah now in another orientation we have something called uh, orientation chat box we have opened now why we have done that we have done that very consciously because we want to uh, make yourself experience with different types of uh, uh, avenues for asking questions and we also want you to streamline yourself as somebody said get in that self discipline right so you have to be part of this orientation chat you can see this orientation chat if you go to your email id in the space click this browse click this browse space and put orientation 2021 i have already joined so that's why you are not able to see here again so you search for this and then join in this space and you can see here there are number of people who are already texting it here and today's question i am directly go, going to take from the mentimeter i am not going to take these threads and during the session i would always suggest please avoid any personal comments and exchanges in this and restrain only to uh, the orientation question if you have your friend you can also ask your friend to add you if your friend is already there you can go here and add a, a email you can add only shastra register number at ac.in so how to go go to your email go to the spaces click on this plus icon browse spaces and then add yourself to that the next how are you who are you sorry who are you introduce yourself okay so i am narain uh, i am from the chemical engineering department so uh, i i am completely from uh, btech mtech and a phd in chemical engineering i belong to the school of chemical and biotechnology i don't take one course as part of first year which is called introduction to engineering design uh, for the engineering program how to change password now how to change password is also there as part of uh, uh, let me just uh, show it 
uh, yeah, as part of this manage Google account, you can go and change your password. So that is there available. Let me come back. Can we carry mobile phones? Of course. I think now this question should not be asked. There was once a time when we were never having mobile phones in, in, in the places of learning. Now the learning itself is through the mobile phones. So mobile phones are certainly allowed, but I would just add a rider here. You should use mobile phones for the purpose in that particular place. When you are in class, use mobile phone for the purpose of learning. Do not use, do not misuse rather the freedom that is enshrined in a university education, right? If you use the freedom properly, we are very happy. Mobile phones are allowed for classes and use it for academic purposes. Uh, so details regarding, I am not able to get this question. So it is CAA, don't worry, as the classes begin, your respective teachers will keep you informed when is the CA going to happen, the pattern and everything of that. Oh, labs, this is very tough. Uh, a good question, uh, rather first. It is indeed tough to have labs online, but nevertheless, the C programming labs will do happen online because there are online tools that is available for C. So that will happen online. The rest of the labs, we will have it when you visit the campus and we will plan it appropriately at that time. How to change email ID and phone number given in the application? Please contact the office. You will again get the details of all this, how to change the details, not only email ID, phone, but also the address and everything. We will give a, a notice on the contact email ID towards the end of orientation and you will be able to change that. WhatsApp group, I'm not clear with respect to the courses. If you're asking WhatsApp group, once your uh, classes begins, the respective faculty will form the WhatsApp group, the, which is the official WhatsApp group for that particular course. So the official WhatsApp group for the course will be started by the faculty. And probably on the first day that you attend the class, the faculty will keep you informed. Online class will also follow the regular class timetable, the class timing, which is from 8.45 uh, to 5.15. But that does not mean you will have all the periods. We have taken into account that there should be a break between the classes. So that factor is done. But otherwise, it is 8.45 to 5.15 in one hour. Every period is 60 minutes. The class timings for law will also follow the same. Syllabi will be available in the student web interface. As I say, after I complete the student web interface part, you can see the syllabus of your own program uh, on the student web interface, even in your Google Classroom. When you join the Google Classroom for the respective courses, your faculty will host the syllabus uh, in that Google Classroom. Now, I, I think I'll skip this question. I think every course is easy if it is properly read, understood, and efforts are taken. Are coding taught to every course? Yes, there is one form of coding or other in every curriculum, uh, be it engineering, non-engineering. In all degree program, we have coding. So this I'll skip. Yes, I have already answered. So it varies depending on program to program, but as I said, Typically around four hours you can expect on a given day, but it does not mean it's four continuous hours. There will be certainly a break between the periods. Uh, how long are the, as I already answered this, tell about Google Classroom. So what about Google Classroom? Uh, is a Google Classroom is something for every course you need to join, which will act as a repository. Now, for every course in your timetable, suppose if you have five subjects or five courses, for every course, there will be a unique course code, uh, a, a unique GCR code, sorry, a unique GCR code or an invite link. And using that link, you have to join the uh, Google Classroom. Your Google Classroom is your digital classroom for that particular course. Like, for example, uh, I will show... 
one of uh, uh, maybe yes so i am taking this course for third year chemical engineering so this is the google classroom for that particular course and all my students would have joined there and we have our interactions happening here so that's about google classroom i will revisit this on october 12th what will be uploaded in google drive so whatever is available in google classroom will be synchronized to the google drive it will be the learning materials notes tutorial problems videos all included uh, this is about uh, at the end of orientation so maybe around uh, october 12th so i'll answer this is it compelled to use google docs it's not about it is compulsory to use google docs all these enablers you should have depending on the course the requirements we will use one or the other but we have we are using google as a learning platform for us can we learn coding from triple e group yes this is not only for triple e group this is for all you can specifically ask uh, email to the dean of your school and you will get very specific answers also uh, office class i don't understand so i'm just skipping yes you can change from your google account as i said click on this my google account and change the password uh, please redo the demonstration for google classroom uh, so what i will do is uh, uh, maybe i will uh, just unshare this presentation so that i can uh, do something and then again so i'm time being just stopping this presentation so that i can take an another google classroom and then show you this demo again so just give a minute i'll just do that so what i'll do is i will uh, I'm going to take an another account and redo this process. So I'm just changing my account. Yeah. So just give a minute. okay so let me again share i think it is done now so i should be able to share yeah so i'm again sharing my screen right yeah so my screening is shared uh, I am showing you how to add yourself to a Google Classroom. I, I iterate here, don't get yourself added to this demo classroom. You just watch what I am doing. We will also make this recording available for you to see so that somebody who have missed it, you can see this recording, which will be useful to you. Plus, you don't need to add to this demo classroom, right? So just watch it. We will make this recording also available to you and we will email you where is this recording made available. Now log in with your Gmail. So which is your register number at shastra.ac.in. I have done this for student one. This is a demo or a dummy account at student one at shastra.ac.in. So once you log in there, click on this Google apps and you scroll down, you will see this classroom. In case if you are not able to find classroom here, all you have to just put classroom.google.com, classroom.google.com. It might open with your personal Gmail account. Make sure you add an another account. So you add an another account and open it with your ac.in. Open it with your register number.ac.in. Let's say for my mathematics course, for some other course, I have this code. You don't need to copy this code, just watch this demo. Once you are in the Google Classroom, just click here, 
click on this plus icon at the top and give the code and then say join and then say join and you will join the classroom and you can see here the students in your classroom uh, and the teacher now i am the only student who have joined because this is a demo account i have not joined with other classes so you can see that nobody else is there so that's that's how you have to see it i hope this clarifies this question uh, where can we find the portal the portal is actually here uh, i will do it this on uh, probably on 12th so now you no need to worry about this portal so we will see it on uh, october 12th and you will get how to access your student web interface any reminder for the class yes certainly this is what i'm going to show you on 12th on google calendar i just started the google classroom today so that you are little comfortable i don't want to put everything on the single day on uh, 12th i will show you how to do google calendar so this i have already answered uh, uh how do you get books we will keep you posted this was already taken up by the vice chancellor he told you that the process is on uh, probably once the classes begins during vijay dashmi you will get more information of this this is already answered no there is no online exams at shastra as of now so we are hoping that you you will come back here uh probably after diwali that's our expectation so the exams as of now will happen this will be a face to face examination uh on campus right everybody will be taught every program has its own uh computational tools and languages being taught how to chat on google meet uh in the google meet suppose if you see it i'll just show you here uh you can see in the bottom there is a chat icon you cannot chat in this meet because you are not part of this meet but when you are on your class when you are on your regular class you have to click this and this is how uh let's like say you can say i have a doubt and the teacher will be able to see it and then respond so this is how you can chat we can go will these online yes online resources will be still used because these online resources will act as repository of learning right this is already taken up will college this is what we expect and you will wait for the formal announcement in the shastra portal will we interact with our fellow batchmates yes it's you have to interact with your fellow batchmates right so you have to find out Uh, your fellow batchmates and then do it and uh, you, you your register number itself gives a clue right your register number is divided based on the branch uh, i'm not sure if you know it or not let me just uh, tell you if your register number uh, uh, let's like say for example you were register number could be like something like this uh, 001001 something like this i'm just typing divide this into parts like this right divide this into parts like this this first one so let me just make it little bigger so that everybody can see if you divide your register number like this the first digit one denotes main campus for people from src it will be two so that denotes a campus this denotes the graduation here if you join in 21 you are expected to if you are an engineering program btech you are expected to graduate in 4 years if you are a 3 year program you will graduate in 24 so this denotes the graduating year this is the program code like for example all btech computer science will have one code all btech civil will have the same code in this part this three letter will be same for that discipline all bcom ca will have same all bsc microbiology from src will have the same code this is your serial number so that means your next classmate is very as simple as like this that's all so if you keep doing like this you will have all your classmates so now their email ids you can know it right you can this will be the email id of that class person and you can form 
your own spaces, right? Like for example, I'll just show it in a demo account. So if you are on your email, you can create your own space, create your own space and invite only your classmates. So already you can chit chat, you can start your networking, right? You can start collaborating, you can start learning. Right, so I suppose that answers you. Uh, let me go. Cultural happens when probably you also come back here, but there is also some online culturals taking place, not as vibrant as how it will be in campus. So on the student session, it will be answered. Uh, this is also through, if it, we hope that you come back to campus. If you are on campus, you will attend a physical exam if it is online then you will use only the google classroom and that i will show you on that day how to upload your answer script in case if it is going to be online this is from vijay Desmi, october 15 where you will provide the classroom code the classroom code will be along with the timetable which will be made available by october 12th at the end of orientation not this week this was again taken up by the vice chancellor kindly give us some time for the university management to prepare for visit and then probably you can bus registration will only happen when uh, there are going to be classes in the campus this is again answered this is from vijay Desmi. oh i think uh, i won't say it is depressing i would say that look into ways of re-energizing yourself right see that you are able to interact and make yourself it is the positive attribute that we should have and i'm sure that certainly it is not uh, depressing it depends on the courses that you have but wherever possible we have made sure that there are gaps uh, it's not completely necessary. You need at least a tab or a laptop or a mobile to attend to the online class. Uh, I think this you can take it up to the registrar's office or the admissions office. This is answered. It will not by email. It will come on your timetable. The timetable will be on the Shastra portal and also on the student web interface. So look for that uh, at the end of orientation session. This is already answered. Yeah, there will be certainly deadline, right? Any activity that we do, we should have a deadline. Some of which will have a very shorter deadline. Some will have a very longer deadline of two weeks, three weeks, one month, depending on the assignments. This is answered, this is answered can you put these education yes we will host certain recordings that are of larger interest in the shastra youtube channel so you can search out for shastra youtube channel in fact our last year's orientation we have already put uh, and this will also be put so you can actually subscribe to the shastra uh, uh, youtube channel is to update recovery nine. yes fantastic Books are compulsory or not? I I think this is already answered. Network, uh, I think uh, none of us can resolve, right? I only wish that you, you find out which is a very stable network provider in your area and try to have it. Otherwise, also nothing to get panicked. You can watch the recorded videos every day and then get back uh, for a clarification. So this is our answer. What is the difference between electives and minors and majors? I think I'm not the right person. Please contact the respective school deans. Uh, this is answered. Online semester is <laughs> online, right? We are starting online and hoping that we will be able to go uh, to the on-campus mode. This is already answered. Yeah, you will be informed but please do watch the website. This is answered, how to get a code and all these are answered. And I think predominantly, what is the minimum specification for using Google Meet? There is nothing like minimum specification, but from my experience, I would tell personally, if you have 4 GB RAM 
I, I think that's good, especially if you are in Windows. If it is possible, you can take 8 GB, but at least 4 GB is a very minimum threshold that one should have. How many, how much data you should have at least uh, 2 GB exclusively for your academic, I mean, not including your gaming and other uh, seeing football matches, cricket matches and everything. So 2 GB per day exclusively, you should keep it for your academics. I think it is one hour. Uh, no, we can change, a, a, can we change our email password apart from Dio? Yes, you can change it. At the login itself, it will prompt. Now also you can go and then change it from your Google account for your Shastra email. It's one o'clock. So I think most of the questions can repeating. Uh, I will, uh, I, I, we expect an interactive class and I think that's a two way. Uh, the interactive class depends also on you, right? So uh, at this juncture, I will go to my last slide and let me summarize what I have. Online education is something how we leverage on our strength, taking care of our weakness, and we need to face this challenge and we have a lot of opportunities. The strength is it gives, enables us to reflect, reach, have variety in terms of assignments and everything. Yes, I do understand there is an in-person connect is little less. Practical components cannot be done. You cannot have a real-time feedback on seeing the face. But this is can be overcome by proper use of technology. There is a very good continual learning opportunity through online education. And the challenge is we need to keep ourselves committed. And my last slide for the day for this session is this one sentence. Learning is a conscious, continuous commitment of oneself. We can take inspiration from others. Others can motivate us. But the major part of learning comes from oneself. If we commit ourselves consciously and continuously, I'm very sure all of you will come out as graduates with great skills, with great grades, and then you can make up a career change, not only for yourself, for, for the society at large. With this, I thank you for this opportunity. And I thank all of you for your patient listening. Very good interaction, very good suggestions that you have provided. I'll again catch up you on part two of this online education on October 12th. Now for the afternoon session, those of you who are having engineering mathematics refresher class, please join there. Those from B Optom, you will have an another special orientation at three o'clock. For rest of the students, you can take rest. You can recapitulate on points that we have talked. And let us see tomorrow morning for yet another uh, engaging orientation session. Thank you all once again. And let us make sure that we will commit ourselves consciously and continuously to this learning in the university. Thanks to all.